This is Eruri, where epic comes in many forms. Nine mountain ranges, coastline for miles, acres of dense forest. Millions are drawn to this part of North Wales every year. But this is a wild landscape. Where the best day of your life can quickly become the worst. Police emergency, how can I help? There's a little boy trapped in the mountain. And when a call for help comes in, the busiest network of rescue agencies in the country must join forces. How did you get here? Professionals and volunteers side by side. Keep going. Each team bringing vital skills and local knowledge. Helicopter inbound. Of how to save a life in a landscape like no other. Two casualties from five changing injuries. Life is good when people help each other. When it's driving down with rain, the alarm's just gone off. You're thinking, somebody's out there and needs some help. I'm in a position to be able to give that help, and that's why I go. Whatever the reason for a call-out, caring for someone in trouble is what drives Rari's rescuers. I think if you ask my work colleagues, my family, they'd all say, he's the soft one. As soon as we got him on the stretcher, he was so much more comfortable. We're looking at a poorly casualty, and this casualty needs some love, some help, and we're going to give it. And whether their situation was caused by mistakes, reckless behaviour, or just bad luck, the teams are there to help, no matter what. I don't think anybody on the team is ever judgmental about how the injury occurred, what the person's done. They don't call us out just for the hell of it. They call us out because they need some help. Cadwydr is beautiful, challenging, but beautiful. So long as you respect it and give it the respect that it needs, it's a wonderful mountain to go and climb. Cadwydr's location just off the Welsh coast means its seven-mile horseshoe ridge is notorious for low-hanging cloud and rain. And the way from the main path, the steep valleys are packed with dense foliage. The bracken is very tall and it's very rocky underfoot. Making a way through that area is very, very difficult. August, a summer storm hits Cataritris. I can't let you for it to the place. Can I have the mountain rescue out, please, for Cataritris? A member of the public has called 999 worried that two people have taken drugs and are now lost on Cataritris. Take a start, guys. OK, good luck. Two missing people potentially on some sort of drugs, and that's all we've got to go on. It's a search. The first man is found quickly, and more information comes to light. So they've had a little few hours out on magic mushrooms. One of them's just woken up and uh, was scared about where he was, screamed and shouted, and then he's headed down. But they only have a vague idea of where the other man is, and no way of contacting him. confirming search area from the lower style on the Manith Moyle path if you head in an area uh, south towards the top of uh, Cymroi Von uh, Farm, the waterfalls there. Well I was told it was just above the fake bridge which is what we've just crossed and now we're being told to go to the second style 
And that's, whew, that's not fun. When the visibility becomes poor, that's when it gets difficult. It was cold, it was wet. Hypothermia can kick in quite soon. They start asking other hikers whether they've passed the casualty. The fact that no one has seen him rings alarm bells with experienced volunteer Dave. So we knew that person wasn't on the main path. And then you, you, you think, OK, well, out of the area that's left, what might happen? What might somebody do? Well, that's where your local knowledge comes in. It's quite a common error that people make as they descend from Cadda. Certainly, when the visibility is bad, they often head round on that horseshoe shape and don't turn right enough, basically. It was a gut feeling, I think, of Dave. Go for that valley, look in that valley. I'm happy to go round and head down, yeah? Yeah, it's quite a challenging location. There's no paths in that area, um, very rocky. It's very, very difficult. Bracken this time of year is far taller than me. I was definitely wading through the river just below my knee. From the valley floor, other team members try to spot the man's white hoodie against the green undergrowth. Slowly, as the team moved around, people from the bottom through binoculars spotted this person. Do you, doing you well, Doc? I, I, I can see him. But it's first time there's someone with blood. But at the same time, people coming down from above spotted him lying on the screen. The casualty had perched onto the top of a rock and into a position that we could see him. Hello! A few minutes earlier, I think he'd have probably been through in the bracken and we would have just missed him. It was a very fortunate timing. OK, so you've hurt this leg, yeah? OK, mate, no problem at all. I'm going to give you a little check over in a second, all right? Just put this jacket on for now. It was clear that he was in a bad way. There was quite a nasty injury to his forehead, uh, quite a lot of blood down his face. You all right? You going to throw up? How far did you fall? You fell a long way. There was no way that guy was going to be walking out of there. I had two choices. I had a stretcher carry or I had a helicopter. I needed a paramedic. We've got a chance of quick extraction from this location. I would prefer it over. Can you bear request it for if Land 36 is available to help us winch him out of it? Coast Guard helicopter 936 is dispatched. But in this weather, there's no guarantee it will be able to help. Obviously, flying within cloud in close proximity to mountains is not a healthy thing to do. And then there's high wind, turbulence, downdrafting, updrafting, and that can have an adverse effect on the aircraft and the pilot's ability to hover but it wouldn't stop us from trying. Is that tender? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just keep that out so you can tie up for that minute. Yep, yeah, that's good. You're going to get a bit... Keep holding that. The casualty denies he's taken any drugs and says he's in extreme pain, but the team are having trouble working out exactly what his injuries are. He didn't know how he'd got this injury in his head. He didn't know where he'd come from. I couldn't rely on a lot of the information he was telling me. 
So if you had a pain score of 10 out of 10 is the worst pain you've ever had, where are you? We can't rule out a neck injury. We can't rule out the injuries being far more severe than they are appearing. They need a backup plan in case the helicopter can't get to them. Can we get a stretchy party organised in case, please? Because this guy is not walking out of here. Any news on 936? I really need it. I remember asking about an update where the helicopter is. It did seem to take longer than normal. The helicopter crew are en route, but the crew don't have an exact location. Your eyes are naturally drawn towards the routes where people normally walk, and where he was found was so densely fern and rocky that you wouldn't have imagined that people would have been in that location. Oxygen, please, guys. With or without the helicopter's help, the team need to get the man onto a stretcher in case he has a back or neck injury. He actually burst into tears and I could tell that he was in a lot of discomfort and that's when I think I turned up the, the TLC. Yeah, yeah. Right, mate. You all right? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You're doing really well, mate. You're doing really well. Ready, brace, lift. Gently, gently. Hold it there, hand down gently. Then the team get the news they've been waiting for. The helicopter has found them. When you're talking to a casualty, reassuring them is part of the treatment. It's a big, noisy helicopter to come over your head, massive amounts of downdraft, and we're used to it. When you see somebody in a situation where they've never seen one before, it's a scary, scary time. If I can comfort them and put my arm around them and say, come on, mate, you're going to be OK, we're going to get through this. I'd like, I'd like to bump into you one day. Take your hand and have a beer with you one day, yeah? How about a pint one day? Should we go for a drink? When you get through this, I'm trying to convince him that he's going to get through this and he's going to be fine. And once Winchy turns up, that's a big part of a relief. So... I'm going to leave you in Neil's capable hands. Neil's going to take you away, right? We relax even more once it's in the air. And we just literally breathe a sigh of relief. Oof. Nice one, team. Brilliant, Neil. Well done. The casualty is on his way to hospital after a very lucky escape today. Loads of people on drugs. You just hope that that sort of thing is a life-changing moment, and I could probably do with moving on from this. He was a needle in a haystack, so it is a near miracle that he was found in the first place. If he hadn't been sitting on that rock, there's a good chance that the casualty would not be with us today. He'd have been buried in the back, and, and we'd have probably found him in the autumn. They didn't go out that day and think, oh, I'm going to call out Mountain Rescue. They didn't go out with that intention. Coming to you, John. We don't judge anybody like that. It's somebody that needs some love. We go and give them some love. <laughs> Even the most experienced mountaineers can find themselves in need of a rescue. The mountains are an inherently dangerous place. We manage the risks as much as we can, but we all make mistakes, we're all human. A crisp winter's day has brought climbers out to enjoy the Ockwen Valley. It was a really beautiful day. I remember looking outside and thinking, oh my gosh, the mountains look incredible. But as night falls, not all of them have made it back safely. Two experienced climbers have got trapped on a ledge, 
while abseiling in Butres y Garreg Miltir, the milestone Butres area. They have no head torches and are in a dangerous position. It's a place that mountain rescue volunteer Jenny knows all too well. So we're going to go to the base of the fire, get to the open gully at the bottom of the descent gully. I've got some gear and some talons. And I've got the two head torches. We know that Milestone area is quite a common place for rescues. There's a snag point if you try and pull your ropes not in a certain place. If they just stayed put, I was pretty certain I knew where they were, just from having a good working knowledge of the crag. And they're just going to sit tight till you get there, over. The risks are definitely that you are not in a safe place, not on a safe slope. You could end up on a small ledge, um, which might be on a sheer drop. Uh, you just don't know. We could have gone up through the square car park and then through the boulders, but I feel like this is easier. The dark just makes everything more scary because it's proper dark. It means we're less likely to get lost, hopefully. You lose your, your depth perception, you're not sure you can trust your eyes, and even the most benign slopes turn into something quite scary. I think we should take the second style. But it's not long before the team gets sight of the two casualties. <laughs> this from 247. We have spotted our casualties. Our plan is to go in from the bottom and collect them. Possible need a handrail to get them out, but we will advise further. There's a path just to your right. The team needs to move fast. They know the casualties are in a dangerous spot. If you try and pull your stuck ropes too much, you might dislodge rockfall. And that descent gully is so wet and slippery, it's a grim place to be. Have you got a helmet on? Just be careful. <laughs> it gets, it's just quite loose. You get here and you go, oh my God. <laughs> so you did the right thing. It happens to everyone, don't worry. They had basically ended up on a raised grassy ledge, but the problem was that it had steep drops on all sides. And as a climber, that is not a place that you ever want to find yourself in. Stuck on the side of a mountain without your ropes, without a head torch, not good. I think we can come off here if we just take it nice and slow and steady. Okay, so. Your bags, are they at the bottom of yeah, your route? Yeah. Okay, so we'll go and find them. It's really nice in that bit where you've got them out of immediate danger, they're relaxed and... Whew. Is that our yeah. ruin route? No. no. Your route, is it? Oh, We're just going to try and walk okay. them off here. Because uh, you can hold on to this heather, see? And it's okay. Yep. That's it. And can you see this step here? Yes. And then what you're going to do is come across this slab yeah. by holding on to this heather and then it's just a little kind of step down here yeah I think I talk quite a lot anyway but on a rescue I, I will chat quite a lot because I want people to feel reassured I want them to call if they need us because that's why we're here no we have to have an emergency chocolate stop it's essential <laughs> that's it well done nice and then you're just going to sh side shuffle towards me and then down here. It's a bit grassy and slippery. How is that it? We're on good ground. We are, yeah. So you see where it's fine, it looks scary in the dark. It's all good. Yeah. Yeah, well you did the right thing. I think it's just a lesson for us all that it's not just people new to the mountains that need mountain rescue, and that's why we're here. Um, well, do you know what? Um, it got it got us both out of a really uh, boring meeting oh, online. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I was like, I'll go. <laughs> We're very lucky in this country to have a voluntary free organisation that will come and help you when you're on the side of a mountain and you're having a really bad day.
Postranded or lost walkers, calling for help can feel like a last resort or even an embarrassment. But that's not how the rescue teams see it. You can sit there and judge it from your armchair, but I have to hold my hand up and say, I've made some stupid mistakes in my life and I've been on the receiving end of other people's kindness and volunteer time. Some people just get it wrong, get unlucky, and would rather be around to try and help with that because those are people just like us. And making the call to ask for help early can make the rescue much easier, especially on Aruri's toughest peaks. Trevan, I mean, the name <laughs> brings a lot of memories. It's a love-hate relationship with Trevan. It's a bit of a monster. If you don't get the right route up, you can be drawn off really, really easily. The first time we went up, the boys were about eight. Since then, the Owen family from Utoxeter have climbed Trevan several times. We've walked in various places around the UK, but we just get drawn back to Snowdonia every time. We're lucky in the fact that you know, we all enjoy it. But on their last visit, things didn't quite go as planned. Hello, um, I'm after the mountain rescue. Okay, where else are you? We're stuck on Trevan. We've somehow got ourselves so we can't go up and we can't go down. And we're just a little bit worried about going down and injuring ourselves and making the situation worse. So we've got a family of four, the um, kids are teenagers, no injuries, well equipped. The mother has done the, the route before, um, so doesn't really understand how they got lost. The family are what's known in the mountains as Cragfast. People who are Cragfast have got themselves in a situation where they're on steep ground, crag, and they can't get themselves off it. The team think the family are in one of Trevan's steep gullies. Four volunteers head up to find them, including husband and wife, Jamie and Mo. Trevan particularly is quite a complex mountain. Do it a different way every time, never follow the same track exactly twice. So it is easy to get lost. The consequences can be quite serious. It was going pretty well at first. We'd gone up a steep section and ended up looking up a, a sheer face of rock. I thought, I can't go down the way I came up. I can't go up there. I felt a bit panic-stricken. Being up that high is quite scary, especially when they're standing on a little ledge. But while the rescue party heads up to them, there's a development. Two hours since the family got stuck, an experienced climber has come across them and offers to lead them back to the path. Mum Julia calls base for advice. Right, OK, you think you're somewhere around there. If he can get you to the path, and that would help. But don't put yourself in any danger. Hello, OG269, this is OG Base. Uber. Base radio the team to hang fire until they know exactly what help the family needs. We have a member of the public making their way down to the Kaz party who are in Nor Nor Gully. Can you hold it there until we get to them of what the Kaz party want to do? Over. Team member Jed talks to the mountaineer who helps the family get back onto safer ground. If you could just get them onto a sort of recognised path. But with only a few hours of daylight left, Jed's still worried they won't be able to get down safely without Mountain Rescue's help. All I'm concerned about is it, it's late now, it's quarter to seven, you guys are tired. It's still a mountain where you've already got yourself lost once today. I don't want you to get doing that coming down. So my preference, um, which you might not like, is I would like you to stay there until they get them, until they get to you. 
No, don't worry at all. Julia, you've made absolutely the right call. Don't worry. Bye-bye. You could see the sun was going down. Um, you know, we were a little bit anxious. Party have now got to the top of Nor Nor Gully and they're waiting for your oh, arrival to guide them down, over. Yeah, all copied. Dan, what's the deal with the additional member of the public who's helped out, over? Additional member of the public's going to carry on their day. Does this need a team of four to carry all the kit up there or can we split and a couple of people go up with lighter packs, over? And um, The group are not happy about descending, so they might need a bit of... Uh... A bit of kind words, but yeah, happy for you to split as necessary, over. Mo and Lou are going to bring the ropes and tech kit back down to base, over. A team of two continue up the crack towards the waiting family. Day. It was a real relief. You're safe. You had plenty of water today, guys. Our nerves were quite frazzled. We were emotionally tired. And yeah, relief. So we just pop a helmet on just to scramble down here. And I think between us, Jamie and I can just, just help you down. Pop that on there. How's that? We've had a bit of an exciting moment during the day now, and everyone's going, oh, thank goodness we're all good, but just stay focused while we're yeah. going down. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Thank you. Yeah. Do you want to follow me down over these rocks, guys? If anyone's not confident, come earlier. I'm going to yeah, you, earlier. you go yeah. first, I'm yeah. there. When there's a party of four of you, it's really tough because you are trying to decide whether you can all do it together. There's different capabilities, different strengths. So your left foot goes on there. That's it. And then a bit of a step down to here. You try not to let everybody down. They just led us down beautifully. They were like human shields on the rocks. You couldn't feel safer. Can you see Jamie? I can see his bum. <laughs> Recognise it anywhere. <laughs> if it hadn't been for the mountain rescue, I think we might have made some incorrect decisions we might have carried on the route that we were on, which was way beyond our capability. We were lucky, but we might not have been that lucky. I have a lot of respect for the mountain rescue team, voluntarily going up mountains to save people's lives. Our lives were in their hands and their responsibility during that time, and I'm just really glad that they can take times out of their busy lives to help people like us. Lovely to have that thought that you've got that back up. Hopefully we were not too much trouble. <laughs>